never been on a panel before. Oh, really? Yeah. You Welcome to the Westport Library. Today's program will begin momentarily. Supported by Verso Studios. Created locally and shared with the world. Good evening, Westporters. My name is Brian McGonigal, and I am the founder of Westport Pride, and I am glad to uh, be here tonight to hold our second panel uh, discussion around when did you know? Today is National Coming Out Day for those who are not aware, and we're excited to have a great panel here today led by Dan Wogue, uh, who will be uh, speaking with Anthony Creasy and uh, couple other members of uh, the panel here tonight, and I'm excited to turn it over. One of them is running a couple minutes late, so she may just jump in, but uh, looking forward to hearing a great conversation tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. I'm Dan Woog, a proud member of Westport Pride, our town's LGBTQ plus organization. We've put on two great festivals the past two Junes, and now, as Brian said, our second coming out day event. The topic is, when did you know? That is, when did you know you were lesbian, gay, bi, trans, queer? Or more probably, when did you think you might be? It's a question every LGBTQ person thinks about often and something straight people almost never have to. Tonight's session should be very informative. Everybody's story is different. Taken together, they show us how complex and amazing sexuality is. Uh, we'll have questions at the end. And right now, I would like our panelists to briefly introduce themselves. One or two lines about who you are. Anthony? Sure, thanks, Dan. Uh, hi, everyone. Happy to be with you here with you tonight. Uh, my name is Anthony Chrissy, and right now I am the interim executive director at our LGBT Health Center in Norwalk Circle Care Center. And uh, before that, I spent five years at Triangle Community Center, Fairfield County's LGBTQ Community Center. And um, I think, did I answer all, uh, pronouns he, him, his? Perfect, perfect. Maddie. Hi everybody, I'm Maddie Enos, and I'm a freshman at Staples High School. And my pronouns are she, her, and I am very excited to be here. And I've never been on a panel before. So, as you can tell from my 14 year old age, but thank you guys for being here, this is really cool. And Jamie. Oh hi, I'm Jamie Mahatka. I reside in Norwalk, so thanks for having me, Westport. Um, I'm a transgender man. We'll get into that later. My pronouns are he, him, or handsome. Use any of those. And I'm very excited to be here because I'm getting out of putting my three-and-a-half-year-old to bed. So I was already excited, but now it's even more. So very happy to be here. Awesome. So we will dive right in. And uh, when did you first have an idea that you might be, if not LGBTQ, then different in some way? Anybody want to start? Why not? Um, yeah, so I think I actually 
probably suspected at a much younger age, but did not um, come to terms with the fact that I was LGBTQ until junior year of high school for me. Eden, welcome. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Not a problem. You are, what year are you at Staples? Uh, I'm a sophomore. Great. Uh, we're talking about when you first might have suspected that you were different from other kids, Maddie or Jamie. Hey guys, it's me again. Um, sorry. Um, when I was 12 years old, I, I always thought I had this fascination with the LGBTQ community because I was like, why isn't that the norm? Why can't someone like both genders? Because wouldn't that just be normal? Because people are just people, you know? And I actually have kind of a funny story. I <laughs> stop, stop laughing, Eden. But um, I was at my 12th birthday party sleepover with five of my friends. And one of my friends said, guys, I think I'm bi. And I was like, really? Me too. And then my best friend in the world, Never talk to me again. <laughs> Never talk to me again because she was like, it's kind of weird. Anyway, excuse my voice, but she thought that was weird and I've never spoken to her again. And honestly, I think something to learn from that, it took me a while to learn this, but people who aren't there to support your goals or who you are, there aren't people you want in your life. No matter how old you are, you have to learn that lesson over and over and over again. But I'm really grateful that I learned it when I was 12. <laughs> Jamie. Yeah, I will just say, wow, Maddie, if I could have been like that at 14, uh, life would be a lot better. <laughs> I could have learned that a lot sooner. Um, so I knew I was different very young. I have an older sister who's eight years older and treated me like I was her doll. And so I came everywhere with her. And one of our favorite things was to watch Grease. Everybody know Grease? So all I knew at like four years old was that I wanted to do my hair like Danny Zuko. And I didn't know what that was called at four. Um, and then I knew a little later, okay, I like to do my hair like boys and I like girls, but again, didn't have the language for it. And when I talked to my friends and their parents, their observations of me as a child were, whenever we played house, I wanted to be the dad or the dog. So I knew early on, um, and it's more than just, oh, I want short hair. I mean, you guys all know in the media, there's lots of stories about transgender youth and, you know, how early can you know? In my opinion, I knew pretty early. Just because I didn't know what to call it didn't make it any less valid. I knew my body wasn't right. I knew I was mismatched somehow, but I just didn't have the language. Another thing about that, that is true with all, every single part of the LGBTQ community. And of course, each part is very different, but the thing about it is something you don't feel normal. You don't feel right. And the same thing with every everything especially with a teenage girl like you know, should i look like that should i should i act like her even though she's being really mean to me should, what do i do because you don't feel right no matter where you are so the reason i love this pride club or the pride coalition if you want to be fancy is because you're surrounded by people who are like you like girls? I like girls. And then you're immediately friends. And, <laughs> and then it's an amazing place because no matter who you are or who you've been, who you've met, who's been mean to you, who you wish you haven't met, you have someone who you're so glad you met. Eden, when did you first know that you might be different? Um, so for a while now, I've always known that I've been queer and like a part of the community, but I never really had like a term that really fit. Like I first came out as bisexual and that just never really felt right. And then at the time I was having a lot of, you know, crushes on girls. And so I came out as lesbian because I thought that that would be right. But for about two years, I really just struggled like with any other feelings that wouldn't like connect with that identity and but now I know that I'm pansexual 
but it just it took a really long time to find that but I always knew that I was queer I always knew that I was you know sort of you know different I guess if you will so yeah it just took a long time to find that J Jamie talked about how he knew that he just didn't fit in the right body but I want to dig a little deeper uh, to Eden and and, Jay, and Eden and uh, Anthony and, and Maddie, how did you know? How did you know that your life may have been different from all your friends? Well, that's an interesting question, especially, and also, it's a very personal question. So I'm just going to say, I always thought, oh my gosh, she's so pretty. I wish I looked like her. And then slowly I realized, do I wish I looked like her or do I wish she wanted to look like me? And then slowly you just realize, I don't want to look like her. I want her to like me. And also the thing about being bisexual is it's not just either one or the other. Also, you just, when you realize, I'm sorry, I'm scrambling, but um, you realize you're different because when you watch a movie or a show, you don't think, everyone's like, oh my God, this guy is so hot. And you're like, but the girl's pretty too. And, <laughs> yeah. and you feel like you have to defend yourself when someone's like, that's kind of weird. And you're like, I know. Am I, is, is there something wrong with me? And then you find someone who's like, there's nothing wrong with you, more options, which is what my mother said to me when I told her I was bisexual. She just goes, great, more options. And <laughs> my mother's here tonight and she's awesome. I love her so much. She's a great role model. And, and people, when you realize you're different, sometimes you feel kind of embarrassed because you feel like you should be the same as everybody else. There's a sense of conformity. Like when everyone gets in the elevator, everyone faces the door. And what would happen if you didn't face the door when you got in the elevator? What would happen if you just stayed and then walked backwards? <laughs> I love that idea. I'm gonna try it. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I actually didn't know I was different for a long time. And um, I had convinced myself that, like, like, all boys feel this way, right? All boys are attracted to other boys at times. And kind of told myself that for a long time um, until I started, like, realizing, okay, well, maybe not everyone feels that way. But I think for me, what really made me realize I was different was when I started to have romantic feelings towards another, you know, boy in my class and um, beyond just, like, physical attraction, but actually really deeply caring about them and um, actually starting, like, my first relationship at the time. And I was like, okay, well, now I'm not just attracted to someone of the same gender. I'm actually in love with someone of the same gender. And, oh, by the way, I'm dating them. So, like, how long can you be in denial uh, that you are, in fact, different? <laughs> um, and that was what really made me, I think, finally realize, okay, yeah, I'm out and I'm a gay man. Eden, how about you? Um, so in my family, we have a lot of um, queer people in our family. And so I just kind of grew up like sort of like I know that I'm like, like I'm like really fortunate in the situation where I grew up just you know, with the idea that, you know, love is love and you can love whoever you want. And so when I started like, you know, feeling, you know, attraction to people of the same, you know, gender, it was, it, I, I, I think it was more about just like putting a name on it than this feels wrong. Cause I was just, you know, taught at like such a young age that this is normal, this is okay. And I really appreciate my parents for that, for really just, you know, telling me that it's okay because that really helped in the long run. My parents have been like so supportive and I just, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm sorry. What a great tribute to your parents and, and to the fact that, you know, what they, what they say long before is really important. The thing about parents, when you're different in any way, in any way, I can't stress this enough, no matter if you're any way possible, 
the parents make so much of a difference. My dad was an actor, and so, you know, he was fine with it, but, <laughs> but I actually told him by writing in M&Ms on a brownie, but I love my dad. He's awesome. But um, the thing about if any of you have kids who are different in any possible way, don't let any of it change them. Just ask them, are you still the person I raised you to be? And if their answer is yes, that is all you need. Lo <clears throat> love is love. And it is amazing. Love is so beautiful. And if whether it's with a pet or your mother or your father or a romantic love, love is everything. So just let it be. Thank you. So we've, we've touched on this a little bit, but again, I want to dig a little deeper. You know, when, when, you, when you were realizing that, that you were different, how did you feel? Was it, we, we've talked, you've already mentioned, you know, some denial, um, some acceptance, Eden, because you had grown up with it. Um, any other feelings, confusion, uh, anger, yeah, I had those. I had some confusion and anger. Um, I'm Jewish, and it really came out when it was time for a bat mitzvah, and it was uh, hell on earth. It, listen, it's already hell on earth, even if I was comfortable in my body. Let's face that. Um, but then, you know, my I've got a, a very typically Jewish family that wants all these things and the things they pictured when they had me in the storybook. And I wouldn't wear a dress, and I would I was sobbing, you know, and not just the 13 year old hormonal sobbing, like. And like an internal sobbing that comes from like, this doesn't feel right. I need my family to listen to me. So we compromised. I wore a tuxedo to my bat mitzvah. And then the other rebellious thing I did, which they didn't know about, was um, I had long, really long hair that I hated, and my mom wouldn't let me cut it. So I had somebody shave the underside of it so that when my hair was down, you couldn't tell my head was shaved. But if I put it up in a ponytail, you could. Um, so I remember that being like a really tough time. And then the best way I can tell people, can you imagine that you are slow dancing at a bar or bat mitzvah or, you know, a party if you're an adult and you didn't have to do that. And I'm slow dancing with a boy that I want to be, not be with, just be. And I don't know how else to explain it, but that's truly what it felt like. And so I felt all the things. I was ashamed. I was jealous. I was angry. I had all the feelings at once on top of teenage turmoil. So I just didn't have the words to, to break it all down for my family. All they got was I was rebellious, I was a tomboy that was good at sports, and somehow it rubbed off in the, bar, in the bat mitzvah arena and hopefully it goes away. But it was obviously more than that. Oi. <laughs> Anthony, any, anything to add? Wow. Um, yeah, I mean, I was certainly like, I was also angry, I would say. Um, angry at the idea that I had to come out was like very, felt very, very just um, unfair and oppressive that there was like this secret about me and no one knew it and now I had to tell everyone in my life because I wanted them to know who I am and that I was dating this guy at the time. And But it's just, you know, I was like, none of my peers have to do this, right? Um, None of my heterosexual peers have to go to their families and explain their sexuality to them or explain that they're now dating this person or um, go through this whole process. And it doesn't end um, when you tell your parents or your siblings or your extended family. It's really actually something that you sometimes have to continue to do for the rest of your life. Um, but it does get a lot easier, obviously. Um, as time goes on and it gets better for sure. Um, but yeah, I was just, you know, I was angry at the time. I didn't really want to come out. And it leads into the, the next question about telling people. Uh, and, and I've always heard, you know, wh why do gay people have to come out? You know, just straight people don't come out. Uh, and in fact, they do. Every time, a, you know, a, a a boy and girl walk together or a girl says that guy is so hot, uh, they're coming out as straight. Uh, so who is the first person you told? Well, when I, also when I found, when I realized, I felt like 
oh my god, what's wrong with me? But then I realized there are so many people like me. If there are people who are in relationships, the odds of being in a rela- the odds of being in a relationship is so rare, even though people do it all the time. But if gay people can be in a relationship, that means anyone can be anything. But the first people I told, I was at my 12th birthday party at a sleepover at my house, so I couldn't leave. And and I, I was with my five best friends in the entire world, my best friends. And I said, and my friend, she goes, guys, can I tell you something? And everyone's like, yeah. And we're like, oh, I don't know. And we're all excited because we're 12 and it's a secret. And... And she goes, I think I'm bisexual. And some girl goes, what does that mean? And I go, and I made this, okay, face. And she said, it means I like boys and girls. And this girl goes, oh. And I go, I'm bisexual too. And we had this moment. And then the the girl who said, oh, goes, looks at my other friend. And they may have this eye contact. And my heart sank. And... I don't think I've ever told this to anyone actually. And and I just knew that I lost my best friend just because of who I love. But I'm so glad I told my, the people I told because I'm still friends with those people to this day. And we don't talk a lot, but we say hi in the hallway because it's high school, so you have to. But I'm very glad I told those people when I did because I learned who my real friends are. I first came out as bi too, actually, around the bat mitzvah time. Um, and the first person I told was my English teacher. And it was a very, I don't know why I did it like this. I'm clearly, I like to talk. And I would, you know, stay after school. This was the kind of teacher that was just a mentor in life. And then when I, she knew I was just like very upset one day. And she said, you can talk to me. You know, what's going on? And so I just couldn't find the words. And so I took a piece of notebook paper and I wrote, I think I'm, and then I wouldn't fill in the blank. But if you saw me, I mean, I looked like a butch lesbian at 13. So she was like, gay, bye. And I was like, and she was very accepting. And so that felt good. Of course, I reflect now that I'm 39. It felt partially good. I didn't know at the time it wasn't, you know, matching everything I wanted. But um, I'm with, you know, when Maddie says it's so important that, you know, parents, if you can react in a neutral way and show your kids you still love them. Me having that English teacher made all the difference because my family was so awful without me even officially coming out. Um, So I'm really glad that I thought to write half of a sentence on a piece of notebook paper and then I had a teacher who could fill in the blank for me. Um, So in terms of sexuality, the first person that I came out to, I came out to her as bi, um, was this girl that I was like, that I had like such a big crush on. And she was, she was also out as bi. So she was, she understood what I was going through. She was super nice. And she helped me, you know, come out to my parents and tell them my truth. And then I came out to my mom as non-binary. I don't know how many years, like maybe one or two years ago. Um, And to be honest, at the time, I really, I don't think I was really ready to actually like say the words I'm non-binary. I just sort of told her I, I use they, them pronouns. I'm not a girl. And, you know, obviously she, she was asking a lot of questions, which, you know, understandable, but, you know, it really did make me think about it. And I remember like the night, like that night I was like thinking about it. I'm like, was I really ready to do that? But I, now here I am, I'm, I'm, and I'm proudly non-binary. And that was a really good decision doing it when I was. Cause if I hadn't done it in that like moment when I was walking with her in a graveyard, I probably would never have done it. So even, yeah, <laughs> but just, yeah. Yep. It's uh, coming out to a parent is really the first time that you know more than they do. And, and you really are the, are the teacher of your parents. Yeah. Um, well, I'll provide more context uh, for young Anthony to understand what was going on in my life at the time. But um, so I actually grew up 
in Norwalk, uh, born and raised, but um, spent preschool through 12th grade in Catholic schools and was raised in an a Italian Roman Catholic family. So half of my family was very conservative. And then my, uh, the other half, which was not the Italian Roman Catholic half, was kind of the complete opposite, actually, because both of my parents were from New York. Uh, so one side was very liberal. So, you know, I, I definitely struggled being at a Catholic school, a Catholic high school. I was confirmed when I was um, 16, uh, right before I came out, actually, with the idea of coming out and how that fit in with my religion, which at the time it didn't at all, um, or this culture that I had been raised in. And so, you know, um, I actually first came out to the person I was dating at the time, was that was a natural fit that he should know. And um, <laughs> then, you know, quickly soon after came out to our best friend and then my sister who was very supportive. And um, it was all, you know, it was just, you know, I was actually in senior year of high school at the time and really didn't like plan a big coming out. I was like, I'm just gonna graduate and like move on with my life. And no one here really needs to know. And cause why would I tell them about my personal life? But we went on a um, high school senior year trip to DC with the graduating class. And uh, me and my boyfriend shared a room with this other kid in our class that we kind of secretly knew was like us. And so we kind of trusted him. And um, on that trip, that friend that we shared the room with actually added us to the whole senior class. And um, so suddenly I was out. And uh, thankfully at that time I was ready to be out and was just like, this is who I am and I'm gonna own it. I don't care who knows. But it was, you know, it was a, a pretty like a big way to suddenly be out to everyone in your high school. And I was like, I have another few months of going to school with everyone and all that comes with that. So that I'm jumping ahead to your next question. Cause I, I can the see next there, question but. is who helped or hurt you? We also guys don't do that. Just be cool. Okay. Don't do that. Don't be like, Hey, did you know, like nobody cares unless, and if they do care, that's a problem on its own. And also, if they do care, they probably have a crush on them, and that's another problem. But, and also, I'm sorry to interrupt this very deep conversation, but can we appreciate the fashion icon that wearing the rainbow sweater? Like, everybody clap, that's amazing. And the fedora, yes, okay. Back to the important conversation. So who helped or hurt? We've, you know, we've heard a little bit about that, but, but any other thoughts on someone who was really helpful or, or hurtful? Yeah, um, I was able to join uh, like a town youth group, so kind of like a Westport Pride, but it was for teenagers. And they had facilitators that were volunteers and they were trained psychologists and social workers. And it was that kind of safe space that let me just sort of talk openly about who I was and not feel scared. And sort of getting practice in that room with you know, kids that were around my age or in high school. Um, I don't know, I think it was monumental to just have a moment back in the 90s to be like, oh, okay, there, there is a room of people that can accept that I'm still figuring out who I'm attracted to and I have to figure out my gender identity. Like, it was a safe place to do that, it was helpful. Um, and the thing I wanna add about coming out, Maddie, I have a different opinion than you do um, because for me, I wish my wife could be here tonight. Um, I make her come out for me now. And <laughs> it sounds funny, but it's if you can imagine at every turn in my life, I have to come out every day to somebody. People want to know, oh, what's your kid's name? You know, how did you have kids? Or, you know, I had in-laws that didn't know about me for a long time and said, oh, are you shooting blanks? I have people that ask me, you know, like, what were you into as a child? Well. I was into ballet and I was wearing a tutu and that's a very different story than me having to lie and just come up with, oh, yeah, I played soccer. You know, to, to have to answer people and to just be myself, it, it forces me to come out. And there's some days I'm really good with it. I don't mean to say that I never come out, but if I'm ever in a place where I'm uncomfortable, 
my wife is a is awesome and she's very outgoing and she just doesn't care because it's not her it's me but she's sort of my buffer so that if i don't want to deal with a negative reaction or i'm anticipating it might not go right she has no problem revealing it and then we kind of know all right you stick around or you want to talk to us sounds like you're accepting you do what Maddie's friends did and you make a face or we pick up on a nonverbal cue that looks unaccepting great i'm not going to spend my time with you so not everybody's like me, let me preface that. There's lots of people who don't want people coming out for them. But I'm at the point in my life where sometimes I don't want to spend my time doing that if it feels unsafe or uncomfortable. Um, and so I'm grateful I have a wife for that. But more so, you know, touching on when you said, Dan, that, um, you know, what people say, like, why do you have to come out? I literally have to come out or I can't tell you who I am. I mean, ask me anything about my childhood. Ask me a funny story that happened when I was little. Can you imagine if you had to filter every single thing and you're meeting people you like? You know, maybe I was making friends in college or tonight, if any of you came up afterwards and said, oh, you know, like, tell me, you grew up in the suburbs of Chicago. Like, don't you think it's a very different story telling you who I was as a little girl and the crazy things I probably got into? It's funnier and it's true. And it's more authentic. I get to be me. So for me, that's why coming out is important. I literally can't be myself if I don't. I think the, the importance of coming out is exactly what he said. It's letting people you care about and who care about you know who you actually are. Like, they don't need to know every gory detail of your life, but having them know a sense of your identity and who you love, that's so important. Love it, who you love and your gender, who you are, all of that. Because if you look at me, you probably say, oh, that's a girl. And that's true. But for other people, that's not the same. So... I'm trying to train myself to go up to people and say, hi, I'm Maddie, what are your pronouns? Because that's important to a lot of people. And a lot of people won't understand that. They'll think, that's a weird question, can't you see? And I'll be like, well, you, you can't assume. And a lot of boys at my school, I'm not going to lie, they make fun of that. They're like, you, did you just assume my gender? And like, I'm trying not to, but you're being a jerk about it. So, because... Something important about coming out is letting people know who you are. And also, if you aren't, if you are normal, I say this in quotation marks because there is no normal. But if you're straight and cis, don't make fun of people. It's just not worth it. Don't make fun of people because when they're telling you a part of them, something about them, because if someone told you they were, had some difference that you can't see, you wouldn't you wouldn't gawk your eyes and be like, that's, why would you tell me that? That's disgusting, that's unnatural. No, it's human. So coming out is important because just be who you are and having people know who you are is so important in developing relationships with people. Thank you. So any, there's a few dozen people watching uh, online and, and the people who are here. Any advice you would give to someone who might be now in the early stages of trying to figure out who they are? So much advice. First of all, I know I'm hilarious, but so, <laughs> so if you want to tell someone it's be careful, but don't be so careful that you never tell anyone because you want to know who you can trust. And if someone like makes a face at you or tells someone else, you just know they are not your friend. And also if someone is being mean to somebody else, don't be their friend. You don't want to be their friend, even if they're popular or even if all the football team likes them or whatever, I don't care. Don't be their friend because just don't be their friend because it's not worth it. But advice for people who, no matter how old you are, if you don't, if you don't know or you want to tell someone, find someone you trust. If 
the thing is, if, if you would trust them to take a bullet for you, perfect. That's the person. And if you don't have anyone in your life, you'll find one. It takes a while, but you'll find one. But find, if you really need to tell someone, if you have a close friend or a sibling or anyone that can't directly affect your life, which is good, like don't go up to a stranger and be like, I'm gay, I'm so gay. Don't do that. You've probably done that. But, <laughs> but find someone you trust and something I've had to learn the hard way, even though I'm 14, is figuring out who you can trust. I've had a, a very rough time figuring that out because I've always been a little, some people say, oh, there's no too nice. There's too nice, you can be too nice. Because people find someone who's sweet and sensitive and is vulnerable with them and they use that to their advantage. So anyone who's questioning or wants to tell somebody, be careful because people will, some people, there are good people out there and sometimes you just, you don't know, but there are. Like this panel, these are good people. I've known, I've known you for like a week and I've known them for about 30 minutes and I, I know they're good people, but be careful and don't, don't tell someone you just met unless they're like, are you gay? I'm gay too. Don't do that unless they do that. But just <laughs> the front row thinks I'm so funny. Thank you guys for that. But um, be careful. And if, if you realize you can't trust someone and, and you've already shaken out of the feather, feathers out of the pillow and they're in the wind, let yourself be okay. Because every little mistake you make is just part of who you are, but it doesn't define you. Nothing defines you unless you let it. Be careful. Any other advice? Great advice. Thank you, Maddie. Um, just, you know, it's okay to still figure things out. You could think that one thing might um, be the right fit, but, you know, it's not always that. Like, even though right now I'm really comfortable in my identity, that could change. Like, I don't know. I'm only 15 years old, almost 16. Um, but, you know, just it takes time. You don't need to, you know, figure it out right away. There's no deadline. It doesn't matter how old you are. You, you can all, you just can be who you are, but you don't need to figure it out right away. Do what, f f how do I say this? Um, <laughs> take the time so that you're comfortable with yourself before you tell others Great advice. Um, I'm surprised I would add this, but I think if I could have told my former self, try to assume the best in people, surprisingly, um, I think that has served me really well. And if I had moments where I didn't assume the best and I'm consumed with something that's upsetting for me, it would be easy to misread or misjudge others who might be trying to show me support. So. I, I try to lead with that, and I'm also a big believer that secrets are sort of toxic. I felt that way when I was holding in who I was. Um, so I am a fan of, you know, find someone that you can tell. And I'm also a fan of well, what helped me, and it seems really prevalent in today's world, but I looked for people that had the pride stickers. I looked for faculty, teachers, spaces, libraries, um, sweaters, <laughs> clothing. Um, and it's not necessarily to say that I might walk up to a stranger and say, oh, hey, I'm transgender. But, you know, you could, maybe I would, I would befriend somebody. You know, like I told you I live in Norwalk. Maybe if I come to your library and I find that there's a pride sticker, I might, oh, okay. Do you guys have a group here? Or, you know, how does that work? Those are ways I would look for resources. Um, but I am a big believer that for, for me, holding it in was, was no good. So if you are someone who's questioning it's okay, and it's okay to even just talk to someone and say, I'm questioning, you don't have to know. I changed mine from, you know, I was bisexual, and then I was a lesbian, and then I was a butch lesbian, and then I said I was transgender, and then I didn't get enough acceptance, so then I tried to reverse it, which was awful. People were like, well, which is it? But you know what? 
it didn't matter. It's my body and it's my life. So even if you change a thousand times and you're just trying to figure it out, it's okay. It's totally okay because it's your life in the end. Anthony? Um, well, I'm really impressed with Maddie and Eden and um, how much they do know at such a young age. It's incredible. Um, when I was their age, we only had dial-up and we didn't have smartphones. <laughs> so I knew a lot less. Um, I didn't have a computer <laughs> access at all times. Is that, uh, is that like old no, no, it's, we, it was not old you people texting, that. Maddie. It, like, you can't even imagine um, what that was. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it was like you got on the internet at your house with a phone well, the, line. The fax machine. And your whole family would share that one computer with the phone line. And maybe you would get on for like 30 minutes at night at the end of the day. But So, guys, if that happens again, don't read the te or text. <laughs> don't read the text we owe each other. <laughs> But it, it took, you know, it took us so much, it took me so much longer to learn the same things in my life. And, um, you know, what Eden was saying really resonated with me and just learning that I think a lot of people, when they come out, um, they go from not fitting in to, you know, with their friends and their, their peers and they come out and they often feel the need to then try to fit in with their new friends that might be LGBTQ or the only other LGBTQ people they know. And um, there's always just this um, wanting to be accepted. And what I, it took me a long time to learn is that coming out doesn't change who you are and that it's actually really an incredible gift to be unique and that's something we really celebrate in the LGBTQ community, which I love is that there's no like one way to be lesbian or bi or gay or trans. Um, there's, you know, so many different expressions and identities and um, intersectional identities um, contained within each LGBTQ person and we're all unique. And, you know, I would say to a young LGBTQ person to be proud of how you are LGBTQ and unique and the other identities you hold as well. That's great. And it leads into my last question and uh, by the way, I am much older than they are, and I used to take photos with my landline. Uh, but if, if you, last question is, if you, before we go to questions from the audience, uh, so hopefully they will circulate with, with uh, no cards or whatever. If, and, and Jamie, you touched on this. If you knew then what you know now, would you do anything differently? Um, so me personally, I, okay, um, <laughs> sorry. So for me personally, I would just, you know, tell myself that it's okay to not necessarily have a label right away. It's, you know, it was, it was a long journey to finally figure out, you know, the one that fit right for me is just, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes a really long time and you just need to be patient with yourself. And, you know, yeah, and you need to be patient with the people around you because especially like, you know, my parents are super accepting, but you know, it takes time to figure things out, especially with pronouns and, you know, new names and everything. It just, it takes time. And I think that throughout this process, I really wanted things to happen, you know, quickly since they happen, they seem to click in my brain. I wanted them to click in everybody else's, but it, it takes time. So I would just tell myself, be patient. It'll come. Just don't, you know, try to rush things. It, it'll come. Just, just be patient. I would tell myself, so I would, there are a lot of things I would like to tell myself, but... I know it's I know I'm pretty young so it hasn't I haven't lived that much but still a lot of things have happened and I would just tell myself figure out who your friends are before anything happens and this just isn't just about being LGBTQ it's about everything and also if there are any teenage females or no matter how old you are if you're female love your body cherish your body you only get one be nice to it, and it does so much for you. If you can stand up and sit down whenever you want, love your body. If you can, if you can 
no matter how much or little sight you have, your eyes are beautiful. No matter what color they are and no matter what color your skin is, you are so beautiful and you deserve to eat. I have so many friends. I have so many friends. I, I'm, I'm, I, I get, I'm a little emotional about this. I have so many friends who one time my friend, I said, where's your breakfast? Because I'm that friend. But she said, I'm not hungry. And I said, I don't believe you. And she said, I don't deserve to eat. And I got so mad. And she, oh, I'm at least 40 or 50 pounds heavier than her. And she always says, does this make me look fat? And it makes me so mad at the world, at the world, because someone, I know I'm getting off topic, I'm very sorry, but this is just too important. And this is a great opportunity to say this, but so many people have made her think that she, her tiny body is fat. And it's just, if you think you're fat, that's not, that's not because of how you look. That's because of how you feel. And it's, it's not fair. So be nice to each other. Please be nice to each other because you have no idea how much what you say can influence somebody and how they see themselves. And if there are any females watching this, no matter your age, your body is so important. Please take care of it. Man, if I knew then what I know now, I do wish I would um, assume better in people. That's something I would do differently. Um, it was very easy to get wrapped up in my own drama and probably misinterpret times where people were trying to be helpful. Um, and I would also tell myself, it gets better. I think that wasn't a message I got enough. And... Um, I'm the poster child for my single friends, and so I probably could have been back then too, where I tell people, so you know, I've mentioned my, my, my wife. My wife is a cisgender, heterosexual woman, and I got her to marry me. So if I could have told myself at 13 that that was going to happen or that that was even possible, I think I could have lived life with a little more joy and a little more hope and not so much dread and not so much fear that, you know, I would never end up happy. Anthony? Yeah, uh, exactly that. And uh, I think when I came out when I was younger, I didn't even um, have the language to, like, know who I am or be able to describe it. I, you know, I actually never come out as anything but a gay man, but I'm actually not gay. I'm a queer pan pansexual person. I'm married to a non-binary person and um, been very happily with them for almost eight years now. And when I was younger, I was just so sad when I was in high school and lonely and angry. And at times, I really never thought my life would be better um, and was just, you know, really felt like that was it and I was going to be unhappy the rest of my life. And I am just so happy now with my spouse and, um, you know, proud of what I've accomplished in life. And it's, you know, makes me sad to feel how hopeless or to remember how hopeless I felt then. And I just wish, you know, younger me could know how happy I would be when I was older and how, how worth it it was to hang in there, so. Uh, amazing world we live in, uh, very complex and broad and not what you think looking at people. Uh, are there any questions from the audience? Did, uh, did anybody do cards? Does anybody want to pop up and ask any questions? Maddie, did you have something you wanted to add? Hey, guys. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I just want to say that so being different is really hard. And if you know anyone who is different in any way, any possible way, cherish them. Because you never know when something terrible could happen because people change. And also what he said about um, wishing you could go back and tell yourself it gets better and you, you kind of pity yourself because you realize how sad you were. 
and you realize what you could have done, what, how many resources you had, like how many amazing people were around you and how if you had just said one word, help, how much, how much different your life would be. So ask for help and be nice to yourself. Thank Great you. question. Uh, yeah, so I actually had kind of a comment, uh, two different comments, somewhat related. I'm a West Porter, and I'm out 35 plus years as a lesbian, and I have a child. So actually, that's been a big part. You really have to come out 100% once you start, or I believe, once you start having a family and for that child that's dependent on you. But for me, and it is very subjective, the experience, coming out isn't something that you do over time continuously in work. It's something I do at work with certain clients and then a new client or new colleagues. So it's really ongoing. But because for me right now coming out primarily is work because I've been out so long, most of my friends, my family, of course, all know, having the legal protection to come out at work and not be fired is enormous. This is so, so important. And which brings me to my second point, which is legal protections for our community and also respect for our community is so important. And so the only other piece I wanna weave into this, we have an election coming up in 30 days. And right now the LGBTQ community in Westport and also in Connecticut really needs to have candidates and people who will stand by us because we all know what's happening within the community and then also more broadly in the nation. So I would encourage all of us to please vote and vote for candidates who know the, G the LGBT community and supports us. Um, and we know in Westport we have many of them. Jonathan is actually here and he's one of them. I know there were other people, our uh, chief of police was here, who's not elected, but a very supportive person. So I just wanna say it's so important to go out and vote this election and coming out, having protections to be able to come out, especially in the workplace, extremely, extremely important. So, Thank you. The uh, first select woman was here as well. Great. Uh, any other questions or comments? Uh, any final thoughts? Anything you want to, didn't get a chance to say? I know, guys, I talk a lot. I'm very sorry. But I, I got a lot of things to say. So... And I can't say this enough. I'm so sorry. I keep talking. I, I keep, I, I'm sick of holding the microphone, but please be nice to your body. Please. No matter how much you wish it looked different or how you, you wish it acted different or sounded different, like if you hate your voice or I don't care, just be nice to it. Because if everyone's telling you there's something wrong with it, that's not your fault and be nice to it and don't hurt it on purpose. Please don't, it's, it's special and it's yours. Yeah, your body's not a cutting board, don't cut it. That was so dark, dude, oh my no. gosh. Whatever, it's, it's important, don't hurt yourself. I would also add on a funny but serious note, and maybe don't assume everybody's gay because I get that a lot too and then people think before I come out that they're like, oh, uh, Jordan, my wife's name. Oh, Jamie is uh, Jordan's beard. I think that's just a gay man who's scared to come out. Nope, I just was raised female. I've got some feminine qualities that I'm still proud of, but I identify this way. Um, so I say it lovingly, a little jokingly, but also a little seriously um, to believe people and also believe people when they tell you something. You know, even if you don't believe them, the nice face is to just at least feign support while people are trying to figure it out for themselves. And Anthony. Sure. Um, you know, I, I remember like um, reading about Harvey Milk when I was younger and like when I was in college, I think the, the movie Milk came out and something he's credited with saying, I don't know if he actually said it, but he said, you know, come out, come out wherever you are, we need everyone to come out so that people know that they love an LGBTQ person and they will care about our rights and our issues in this country. And, you know, that was in the 70s. 
And um, we know how much things have changed since then, but also how much um, hate and anti-LGBT sentiment uh, still exists in our country at the same time. And, you know, so coming out and identifying as LGBTQ is in itself, um, for a lot of people, uh, it's a political statement of your beliefs that everyone deserves to be equal, regardless of who they love, or regardless of their gender, or race, or any other, you know, part of their identity. And um, <clears throat> if we all, you know, keep living our out and proud lives, and it changes the opinion of those people in our lives who may not share those same beliefs, but love us as people. And I think hopefully we'll keep making progress, right? Thank you. Thanks to the panel. Thanks to everyone here who has come out tonight to hear us. And uh, Brian gets the final word. Do you have a question? I think we have a question. Oh. We have a love note. Never mind. Okay. Okay. Um, well, thank you, Dan, for hosting a wonderful conversation. And I want to thank all of our panelists here. I heard a lot that I didn't know about each of you. And I really respect each of you for sharing your truths tonight. Um, it's really amazing to be able to be a part of that. And so I thank you for that. Uh, to those uh, who are here or are listening, um, you know, remember that um, you know, coming out is a journey. And there is an amazing family waiting for you on the other side. So um, we welcome you, we love you, um, and we're here when you're ready. So thank you again to our attendees at the library and those online. Uh, we are Westport Pride. Uh, please check out our website, www.westportpride.com, or our social uh, at Facebook or Instagram. We look forward to our next uh, set of events coming soon. So stay tuned, and if you're interested in signing up for our e-letter, uh, go to our website as well. And so thanks again to Westport Library for allowing us to use your space, and uh, thank you again to all who attended and all who participated.